Palip is found. Now what should be done? On our previous video, we talked about Palip types, shapes, etiology behind them. What happens next when a patient having a polyp is diagnosed with the controlled colonoscopy or with evaluation upon presentation of related symptoms? There are two steps on deciding an endoscopic intervention for polyp. First is characterization of the polyp. Other is deciding which endoscopic treatment is suited best for the polyp. These questions should be answered for polyp characterization. What are the sizes and the shape? Are there any surface patterns showing high suspicion for cancer? If suspicious for cancer, is it invading the deeper tissues beneath mucosa? In order to answer these questions, there should be advanced endoscopy equipment such as Full HD, electronic chroma endoscopy, magnified endoscopy that are used in the most of the standard endoscopic suites in the country. These equipments and the staining techniques reveals the borders and the surface features of the polyp. Here you see a polyp initially evaluated as 4 cm diameter on standard colonoscopy, and then polyp is found as 10 cm diameter upon evaluation with advanced chroma endoscopy. If there is any area of polyp indicates cancer, the polyp must be evaluated with endoscopic ultrasonography and radiological work up to see if the cancer invades deep tissues of colon. Here you see the evaluation of a polyp with cancerous area on endoscopic ultrasonography. At the first step, the polyp is characterized with electronic chroma endoscopy, staining endoscopy, magnified endoscopy and endoscopic ultrasonography. After that the polyp found to be resectable with only endoscopy without surgery. There are several methods for polyp removal. Which one do we choose? The important point here is whether the polyp should be removed as a single piece or divided to small fragments and removed in multiple pieces. If the polyp is removed in multiple pieces, it is expected to recur more and when the polyp is recurred, the second procedure for removal is harder and associated with higher rates of complications. So the answer for the prior question should be like this. The endoscopic method which allows for the single piece excision should be preferred depending on the size, shape and cancerous potential of the polyp. Single piece removal of the polyp is needed for confirming the diagnosis and complete resection. Today, these treatment methods are defined on Japanese and European guidelines. Decisions for the treatment methods are made depending on the experience of the center. In our hospital, we follow Japanese advanced endoscopy guidelines. These methods ranging from basic forceps to endoscopic full thickness resection. Here you see a 6 mm diameter polyp removal with simple cold snare method. Here is the removal of a large pedunculated polyp causing bleeding is made with endo loop and snare method. On this case, classic endoscopic mucosal resection is preferred because it can't be removed with standard polypectomy since the polyp size is less than 3 cm even though it is flat shaped. On this case, pre-cut endoscopic mucosal resection is preferred because it can't be removed in end block with classic endoscopic mucosal resection. On this case, the polyp can't seem to be removed in a single piece with standard polypectomy or endoscopic mucosal resection. The polyp here is removed in a single piece with endoscopic submucosal dissection technique. Here, the polypoid tissue is invaded the deep colon tissue. Endoscopic full thickness resection is used for removing the polyp for successful treatment. As you can see, the endoscopic resection methods change depending on the size, shape and character of polyps. On our case series, as to the date on this video, we have completed more than 2,000 endoscopic submucosal dissection, more than 3,000 endoscopic mucosal resection procedures, with methods both chosen by the entire world and developed by us. Our center is successfully working for treatment of polyps.